Your Massachusetts real estate market update for July 25th, 2022. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb with the Chubb Homes team. Today, we're actually gonna talk about how inventory levels have leveled off. And in one market segment, we actually saw a decrease in the amount of inventory week over week, which was unexpected to say the least. And we're, we have some really big, very important market economic news that's coming out this week that's gonna be a huge factor for, uh, well, for our economy to come, which obviously equates to housing as well. We had some of the lowest rates since June, or beginning of June, uh, just last week, which was great news for our market. New home sales, they were actually down nationwide. We're going to talk about that for a couple seconds. And then on top of it, I'm actually going to make my prediction for July home sales, specifically here in the state of Massachusetts. So on deck for this week, let's talk about these market numbers first, because it's just so important for what's going to go on. Ultimately, the, the first thing was consumer confidence, which actually came down today. We saw our our third month over month decrease in consumer confidence down to 95.7. This is important because if consumers aren't feeling confident, they're out there not buying, you know, apparel to cars to houses, right? The consumer confidence is a big, big, big factor ultimately in our market, in our marketplace and the amount of houses that we're selling. So that's a number that we definitely want to keep our eye on is we're down into the 2015, 2016 number, not panic area, but it's definitely something that we want to keep our eye on. Now, something to be reported is pending home sales this week. Actually, I believe it's tomorrow, which is going to be interesting to see how pending home sales around the country are. I estimate here in Massachusetts, it's down about 25% for the month uh, of June, okay, year over year. Uh, we're going to see quarter two GDP numbers. There's this talk about that bad recession word, right? Are we officially in a recession? So we're going to find that out this week. Um, but they also have inflation numbers. They have real income numbers. They have real uh, consumer spending numbers. All things that, yes, you know, don't necessarily 100% impact the real estate market, but they do, right? How does the consumer feel ultimately makes up for if they're buying houses or not. And they also feed into the federal funds rate, right? Is there going to be a 75 basis point increase? Is there going to be a 100 basis point increase? I'm hoping for the 100 basis point increase. Let's get this done. Calm down. Allow the economy to kind of sort out these increases in interest rates. So I'm hoping it's going to be on the aggressive side and then for them to hit that pause button maybe or possibly lower the amount. But hey, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the Fed chair. Um, so that's a big part. All of those things really feed into those numbers. And it's really, 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 really important to remember that just because the Fed increases their interest rates does not mean that that equates to an exact increase in the mortgage rates that us consumers pay, right? So if they increase basis points by 75% at the Fed, does not mean our interest rates for our mortgages go up by 75 basis points. So keep that in mind as that goes on. So the lowest rates since June, um, we saw, or beginning of June, you can see right here, right? This again was really great news for the real estate market. Ultimately really great news as we go into this federal funds, um, you know, rate hike. And, and this is because our interest rates are actually tied to more closely the 10 year bond versus what many people think of the federal funds rate. And, and ultimately, as this recession talk comes more and more clear, right, people are looking for more safe havens, which means they're more in, generally inclined to go towards bond investments, which push up yields and push down rates. So that is why our interest rates for our houses have gone down. So let's jump into the single family market where current inventory is 5,528 single family homes currently on the market. Now this is only eight more houses than we had this time last week. So we only saw inventory increase by eight houses. I think we can say at this point, well, a couple more weeks of it, inventory levels might have leveled off. We're going to continue to keep our eye. Now we saw 1,000 224 new listings come on the market in the state of Massachusetts. And when you exclude all the holidays, right, this is actually the lowest number of new listings in one week since March. So, you know, that's pretty telling of kind of where this market is headed. You're, you're seeing a lot of sellers kind of hit that pause button, if you will, like, hey, I don't need to sell right now. It's not the perfect selling environment. So, maybe I'll just kind of stay tight. And that might just be what we're seeing a little bit of. Now, it's important to say that this is an actual, that 1224 is actually 10% below the amount of homes that we saw listed this same week last year. And for pendings, we had 1,216 single family homes go under agreement, which is 8% 
below what we saw the same week just last year. We had 897 single family homes sell in Massachusetts for an average sale price of $768,000 and a median sales price of $600,000. Our months of inventory actually decreased from 1.51 months of inventory last week to 1.47 months of inventory this week, which was the same as two weeks ago. And it is important to note that um, the high for months of inventory was 1.68, which we set uh, back in uh, end of June. So the inventory year over year gap, I really want to mention it's it's beginning to close, if you will. It's beginning to tighten, I should say. So when we compare today's inventory levels to the same time last year, we have 19.4% more houses on the market than we did this week last year. If we were last week, that number would be 19.8%. If we were just three weeks ago, that number is about 30%. So yeah, like I said, that inventory gap, it's starting to close. We're seeing less and less sellers come to the market, which is something that we're obviously, like I said, going to have to continue to keep our eye on. Um, and, and it's really interesting. Yes, we saw less buyers, so yeah, <laughs> less sellers have come to the market as well. And, and, and we might just be finding a little bit of an equilibrium uh, in these summer kind of dog day summer months, if you will. Houses are still selling, just not as much. And this might be a really great thing rather than seeing a huge inventory buildup ultimately going in the fall in order to see these lower inventory levels. It, it, it's probably all around a really great thing for the marketplace. Now, I think I might ultimately be wrong about my prediction of having 6,500 single family homes on the market at the end of August, but we're going to have to keep our eyes on and, and see if I was wrong. But I did mention a couple of videos ago, a couple of weeks ago, that I was keeping my eye on the Brockton and Hingham markets, right? Kind of an entry level market and then our luxury market. As I saw huge increases in the amount of inventory that came on the market, you know, just, just about a month ago. Now, I did a look at these, and what's interesting is Hingham, okay, has about a 5% increase, which is only two more single-family homes currently on the market compared to just one month ago. Now, Brockton is a different story. Brockton's inventory is up by 29%, or otherwise 16 additional single-family homes are currently on the market compared to just one month ago, with 72 single-family homes currently uh, on the market available to buyers today. So what is this kind of telling me? Well, it's kind of telling me that these interest rate hikes, right? They're affecting that lower pricing segment a lot more um, because maybe they can't afford the houses or maybe they're feeling less confident. And I actually saw that I, I felt that the decrease in, in the stock market, right? We, we, we've been taking some pretty big hits in the stock market recently. I really thought that that would also ultimately affect our luxury market more than it did. Um, but so far, that luxury market has been staying relatively pretty strong, which is uh, great signs for that market. Now, let's move into the condo market where there's 2,798 condos in Massachusetts currently available on the market. And this is compared to 2,814 units that we had just last week. So this is the market segment where we actually saw a decline in the amount of um, available inventory to buyers. Yes, I know it's only 16 units, but a decline is a decline. And it's something that really ultimately kind of left me scratching my head. So there are 487 new listings that came on the market for condos in Massachusetts. This is a 19.5% decrease when we can't compare the same week just one year ago, right? So that's a pretty big decrease in the amount of available new inventory to home buyers uh, in the market. We saw 463 condos go under agreement last week, and this was a 16% decrease in the amount of condos that went under agreement when we look at this week compared just to this week just one year ago. We saw 324 condos sell last week for an average sale price of $655,000 and a median price of $534,000. Now, our months of inventory actually decreased down to 1.63 months for compared to 1.64 months uh, last week, which let's just note that that 1.64 months was actually a months of inventory increase, but it's still a really, really, really strong seller's market is ultimately really what we're getting in both the single family as well as the condo market. I will say that those sellers that get a little too aggressive with their pricing, the market is definitely punishing them. You need to be realistic with your pricing today. You can't go aggressive. You can't go crazy, right? Otherwise, your house is going to be one of those that are sitting on the market. So new home sales, like I said, they were actually down to a level of 590,000 
units sold in June uh, of this year. And this is compared to the 642,000 single uh, new construction units that we saw sell in June of, or excuse me, I should say May of this year. But year over year, right, sales were actually down about 17.4%. It's currently estimated that there are 463,000 new construction units currently available to buyers throughout the whole entire country, which equates to a 9.4 month supply of inventory. Why is this so important? Because this is signaling that in, for new construction, it is actually a buyer's market. Buyers have the upper hand for new construction markets. So what does this ultimately mean? It probably means price reductions, which we are seeing throughout most of the country significantly. There are some markets in this country that when you look at all available inventory on the market, this is Boise, Idaho, 62.5% of all homes available in Boise, Idaho have had a price reduction. That is an astounding stat. But when you have 9.4 months worth of inventory in single family homes, which is ultimately competing against those, and these builders on top of it have what we call shadow inventory, so other inventory that isn't necessarily quote unquote on the market, they're gonna get aggressive with their pricing. There might be some great deals out there for buyers um, through pricing to incentives to you know concessions builders are going to be offering it. And this is compared to this time last year where we had 350,000 um, available new construction properties, which was the equivalent of 5.4 months supply of inventory on the market. It's important to note in the Northeast, we actually only saw new construction sales down about 5.3%. Again, new construction home sales is not a huge segment of our market. We are not as exposed as other markets, say, the uh, Midwest or Southeast right, right markets, Th those markets are very exposed. We're not as exposed to this, um, you know, enormous amounts of builder supply and the decrease in the amount of new homes sold. So my prediction for July is we're ultimately going to see home prices go down when you compare it to the June numbers, right? We're going to see the average sale price down slightly, but the number of sales I'm kind of predicting to be down around 20%. So the amount of houses sold in July versus July of uh, July of this year versus July of last year, I'm kind of thinking is going to be about 20%. The average sale price I think is going to be well over 10%. So those are my predictions for July, which we're going to find out pretty darn soon. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you have any suggestions on how I can do better, or if I'm missing specific information, throw those comments in this section. We'd love to hear it. I'm always looking to be better. If you have questions or concerns about your own specific real estate, you know, needs or, hey, what's going on with your life? Life, right then feel free to reach out to me my contact information is in the description below I'm always happy to talk with you about your own specific situations and then um, if you could do me a huge favor if you could hit like on this video as well as share it that's if you found this information helpful I should say hit that like button and share it for friends and family I would be so thankful I thank you for watching this video and look forward to hearing from you with any questions